Now, Pope Francis, there's big news going around where he stated that there is no hell. So I'll be reading certain parts in the news right here. So this is documented at legit sources. I'm going to be reading. So this is at the New York Times. Does hell exist? And did the Pope give an answer? So they wrote right here, bad souls are not punished. The journalist Eugenio Scalfari, 93, reported the Pope as saying, quote, a hell doesn't exist. Also mentions right here, in October 2017, Mr. Scalfari wrote, quote, Pope Francis has abolished the places where souls were supposed to go after death, hell, purgatory, heaven. Now, assuming that's true, assuming that's true, why would the Pope do that? The reason why the Pope has to do that is because if you're going to gather all the people to love you, trust me, if you preach on you're going to burn in hell, you're going to drive away the world. But if you want the world to love you, you let them know there is no hell. You're not going to burn there forever. So in order to bring a one world religion and one world order, you have to make sure that something negative is out. And I'm sure we can see an amen to that one. That's what Laodicea wants. Yeah. To bring Laodicea, New World Order, One World Religion, etc., you have to cross out the negatives. So thus, hell. Now, here's the thing, though, okay? Here's the thing. Is that they claim that that didn't actually happen. Because the person who first recorded and documented and spread the news because he's the one who actually interviewed Eugenio Scalfari, he actually retracted. He retracted and said that it was an exaggeration. So I'll be reading right here. That odd declaration came after the newspaper La Repubblica published a front page article on Thursday by an atheist left wing and anti-clerical giant of Italian journalism who reported that during a recent meeting the Pope had said that hell did not exist. Nor for Mr. Scalfari does a tape recorder or notebook or the orthodoxy of quotation marks. So it's undocumented. It's only just firsthand with him talking to the Pope. That's what they claimed. In the past, Mr. Scalfari, the founder of La Repubblica, a Bible of the Italian left that he edited for decades, has admitted to sometimes putting words in the papal mouth. So another one right here, the editor of La Repubblica, Mario Calabresi, said the paper had not labeled Mr. Scalfari's piece as an interview. It was, Mr. Cal Calabresi said, the fruit of a, quote, cultural exchange and dialogue out of the 19th century between a Jesuit believer and a man of the Enlightenment fascinated by religion. Now, you know what's scary about this? So why did the Pope... All right, that's what the Vatican claims. So he claims that there was no hell. But then now we got a claim right here where, no, he never said that. All right, that he never said hell didn't exist. So hell does exist. Now, which one's true or false, right? It doesn't matter. The reason why is this. Why doesn't it matter? I have two thoughts right here. One... Pope's lying through his teeth. Why? You got enough power. They got enough power over newspaper companies. I mean, the Jesuits, you got to realize how, much, uh, how many things that they control. I mean, the founder of the CIA, I don't know if you knew this, but that guy's a Catholic, William Donovan, known as the father of the CIA. And then you have Jesuit leaders who have Masonic symbols in their rings. And you know the Masons, how much stuff they control. <laughs> in banks, Hollywood, and politics, etc. So, I mean, they've got enough power. So, the Pope can be lying, and then he paid off the, the atheist reporter, and through that payment, and not only that, the pressure that the poor atheist reporter is getting from his uh -huh. company and bosses and all the world, that's why he has to retract, so the Pope's lying. 
Why would the Pope lie about it? The reason why is this, is because that then he's going to lose the Catholics. You know why? The Pope, he has to please everybody. If you're going to be a New World Order leader, and if you're going to be the Antichrist, you have to please everybody. So what he did was he said this to please Mr. Atheist. Then he said this because he realized how much heat he was getting, so he said it this way to please the Catholics. Amen. So this one could be true, or this one could be true. The atheist is lying, but the Pope, he was trying to please the atheist. Here's the thing you got to understand, is that why would this atheist get along with the Pope? Why would the atheist say that's what the Pope said? And why would the atheist, if it's true that he retracted and he was in the wrong, why would he retract? Because he was pleased with the Pope. So why is this still dangerous? The reason why this is still dangerous is because, see, in order to be a one world order religious leader, you have to please the atheist. So if the atheist can get along with the Pope after that, then you don't think that this is very possible, a one world order where you can have the Catholic Church as a do one of the dominant religions, all religions uniting, and the atheist tolerating with that and getting along with that? See, it doesn't matter. Either way, it doesn't change the fact the Pope, what he's trying to do is trying to create it one world pleasing everybody. It doesn't change that fact. That's the power of the Antichrist, you must understand. And you got to realize that this quote, cultural exchange and dialogue between a Jesuit believer and a man of the Enlightenment fascinated by religion. Look at that. See, a Jesuit and an atheist getting along really well. Here's another one you got to understand. In September 2006, 13, Francis sent a letter to Mr. Scalfari, later published in La Republica, in which the pontiff wrote that atheists should, quote, abide by their own conscience, and said that Christians should engage in a sincere and rigorous dialogue with non-believers. Weeks later, the Pope had a long discussion with Mr. Scalfari, the reconstructed transcript of which the journalist published in La Republica, Quote, each one has his idea of good and evil and must choose to follow the good and fight the evil as he understands them, the Pope said, according to Mr. Scalfari. He added that efforts to convert people to uh, Christianity amounted to solemn nonsense. So notice right here that this atheist reporter, Scalfari, he was saying that the Pope, he's not as extreme as some Christians would understand him to be. And he's trying to say that this Pope, he understands that everyone has their own idea and viewpoint of good and evil, and they will follow to their own understanding. We all must do that in harmony together. See, this is all one world. Uh, quote, another thing right here. But throughout, the Vatican had seemed reluctant to bring down the hammer on an erudite man toward whom the Pope apparently had grown affectionate. Look at that, see? So the Pope, the Vatican, they don't want to be enemies with the atheists. Why? Because if you make atheists with liberal news companies, the bunch of liberals at Hollywood and all that, you can't go one world. Francis stayed in touch with Mr. Scalfari, calling him on the phone and inviting him in for another long chat in November 2060. Mr. Scalfari described their warm greetings and reported that the Pope said, it is the communists who think like Christians. <laughs> and then notice right here, Mr. Scalfari said this, we've become friends. Recalling that the Pope helped him into his car during the last visit and that this time he walked him to the door. He blessed me, but knowing that I'm not faithful, he blew me a kiss and I responded in the same mode. Oh, isn't that a nice ending, a happy ending with atheists and Catholics getting along? Look, see, th this doesn't matter. This quotation shows that this pope is getting even closer to atheists yeah, and liberals. Right. It doesn't change that fact. Yeah. Whatever happened, it doesn't change that fact, see? What does the Bible say about the pope 
Christ's view of hell, what the Antichrist will do with hell. He has to water down hell in a way where people will tolerate it and make a covenant with hell. Go to Daniel 11. Daniel chapter 11. People don't read the Bible. Again, people don't read the Bible. It said that. It didn't say that. Yeah, it said that. All right. Let's start with Scripture with Scripture first. All right. He has to deceive first. Verse 21. And in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom, but he shall come in what? Peaceably. And obtain the kingdom by what? Flatteries. All right. He has to do that. Verse 22, and with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken, yea, also the prince of the what? So notice that there's a covenant between the people and notice that in the, sometime within that covenant, it's they're betrayed, they're hurt, they're overflown. Now look at verse 23, and after the league made with him, he shall work what? Deceitfully, for he shall come up. That's right. The Pope can't come up higher unless he works deceitfully. No wonder liberals are now saying, we like this Pope now. Uh -huh. You want to go up? You have to work by flattery and deception and lying. Keep reading. For he shall come up and shall become what? Strong with, notice, small people. There's your elites right there. Small, powerful group of people who can take over the world. Anyways, look at Isaiah 28. Isaiah chapter 28. This covenant he makes with them, right? So we saw in Daniel chapter 11 that he, the Antichrist, he has to make a covenant. But within this covenant, it's broken. This covenant is created by deception and lies. And through these lies, with this covenant he makes, it's going to hurt them in the end. It's going to destroy them in the end. Now we're going to look at Isaiah chapter 28. Yep, that's why sometimes I'm glad that I finished Bible study late. Amen. Amen. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I'm glad I finished Bible study late. Look at Isaiah chapter 28, and we will read verse 15. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 15. So Pope Francis says there's no hell. That's a big thing going around now. But then now, uh, the atheist, uh, the reporter who claimed that there's no hell by Pope Francis, he actually retracted. It is claimed that he retracted. So what is true or false? Did Pope Francis really say there's no hell? Or uh, did, it, did he actually say that? It doesn't matter. Either or, he's, try, he's getting closer with the atheists and liberals so that he can please everybody. And that's how the covenant is made. What you have to do is to work deceitfully so that they can draw closer in tolerating with this one. Look at, they make a covenant with hell. Isaiah chapter 28, 28 verse 15. Because ye have said we have made a covenant with who? Death and with who? Are we at what? Agreement. Why? Because let's, assume, let's say this way. Hell is not eternal torment. Hell is just separation from God. I wonder who said that. Uh, Mr. Billy Graham or who? See, that's why you can get along with everybody. So the thing is this, is that uh, they're going to get along with that one. Now, keep reading right here. When the overflowing skirt shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. See, we're not going to get harmed by hell. You know why? It doesn't exist. For we have made lies our refuge, and under falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Judgment also will I lay to the line, and righteousness to the plummet, and the hail shall sweep away the refuge of lies. See that all those lies are going to be cleared away about hell. And the waters shall overflow the hiding place. Uh, remember the flood overflows and overthrows uh, them at Daniel 11. Remember reading that? See, it bites back on them, their covenant. Keep reading. And your covenant with death shall be what? Disannulled. And your agreement with hell shall not what? Stand. Look at this. It's going to bite back on them. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, then ye shall be what? Trodden down by it. Boom. See, it's going to bite back against them. 
oh no, it's not talking about a future time period. No, it is. We read verse 16 and 17. What's that? That's God setting up a future kingdom with Israel. See that? So this is future end times right here. And does it bite back on them? Oh, yes, it does. Because in we're not going to turn there for time's sake, but what does the Bible say? Revelation 6 and Revelation 9, God's going to unleash death and hell, and supposedly that covenant with death and hell is not going to harm them. It will harm them. And a quarter of the world's population is wiped out, and people will want to die, and they cannot find it.